What's up guys, Intellitech Mobile here, and this is the full review on the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. We've got three examples here. Two of these are identical in a pretty rare color, and then one is one that's slightly less, slightly more common, but still not one you see too often. So, this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 full review. Now, this is going to be not as long as many of my other in-depth phone reviews because I've reviewed the Note 9 many times over the years and really this is not going to be much different in terms of what I'm going to say. Let's just get the gist out of the way. If you're watching this video because you love the Note 9 but you're wondering if it's a bit too long in the tooth and you're wondering if it's still a good buy in 2023, well, look, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, my opinion, my usage, the Note 9 is still a damn good phone in 2023. And there's a few reasons why. It's not just because of the features that it has that newer Galaxy phones don't that I absolutely love. Headphone jack, really nice speakers when you compare it to its immediate successor. A decent design that isn't too easy to touch the screen accidentally, despite still having the nice curved edges. A Bixby button, which a lot of people don't like, but can very easily be programmed to something else. Micro SD card expansion, both storage options being a decent amount of storage. You got a 128 gig model, which is the most common that you're going to find with 6 gigs of RAM, which is still the same specs you can get in the mid-range Galaxy A52 5G that a lot of people are buying nowadays. But this is definitely the better buy in every area except for software support. You've got the micro SD card, and you've got the physical fingerprint sensor that doesn't go through the screen. You've got a heart rate monitor. You're missing a wide angle lens, but the wide angle lens isn't all it's cracked up to be, anyways. And you just overall have a device that's super easy to repair, super easy to keep running, very affordable nowadays. And while it doesn't have 5G, the LTE service on this is very strong. And it's also very easy to find one that's factory unlocked, so you don't have to worry about trying to hunt down a specific carrier version like on much older notes. So right off the bat, the Galaxy Note 9 is still really good, but what's its biggest Achilles heel in 2023? Well, the Galaxy Note 9, much like every previous Note, the software has unfortunately obsoleted the device before the hardware does. The good news is the Note 9 has not, re has not reached that point yet, and I don't believe it will for at least a few more years, at least a couple more years at a minimum. You'll still be able to use this thing all the way through at least the end of 2024. I'm very confident in saying that. Even if you use banking apps and whatnot, those shouldn't drop support for Android 10 this year. At a minimum, they do it next year, if not 2025. Android 10 is still very well supported on a lot of devices, so thankfully the software has not yet been a problem for the Galaxy Note 9. Samsung Pay still works, as long as you your Note 9 is at least somewhat updated. And it has MST, so you're not missing out on the functionality of mimicking a magnetic card swiper that you get on newer Galaxy Ultra phones, the series that replaced the Notes. And unlike the Note 10 and Note 20, you've got a headphone jack, and you've got just guaranteed micro SD card slot across the board, not depending on which version you get. And there's even versions with dual SIM support as well that you can still find. The Note 9 also has some of the best colors they ever came out with. Now, they're not the best colors. Uh, I don't have all the colors here, but there's some of the rarer versions that you're not going to find since as often since they never came out in the States. That includes the Alpine White you see here, as well as the Metallic Copper. Uh, the copper, once in a while, you find in the States, but it's very hard to find. It basically doesn't exist. But in the States, you easily got black, blue, and purple, so you've got something for everybody. And if you're lucky, there's a silver version as well, which is absolutely gorgeous. Cloud Silver is a beautiful color, very reflective, and nice. There's some drawbacks. My favorite D-brand teardown skin is no longer available for the Note 9, and some good quality cases are getting a bit harder to find. But UAG cases, which are what I always recommend, you can still find these open box on eBay for less than $20, so that's still great. Screen protectors are still all, all over the place. They're a bit annoying to apply on the curved screen, but they're still perfectly acceptable, and there's not too many issues with that. Yes, there is no high refresh rate display, but as someone who can't stand high refresh rate displays, that's just fine for me. 
and you've got Quad HD. So compared to the Note 20 that I currently daily drive, the screen does leave a little bit to be desired on that Note 20. It's still a good screen, I mentioned it, it was a good screen in my Note 20 review, but I find myself missing the Quad HD, but also, especially more so, missing the button in the middle. So the, the pressure sensitive home button lets you just automatically close out of everything and go to your home screen. Yeah, that's a killer feature and I don't understand why they got rid of that. It's a bit ridiculous. Now you can opt for swipe gestures instead, but I greatly prefer the standard classic Android navigation buttons and those are still fine on the Note 9. You've also got a little bit of bezel down here, which is pretty important because on my silver one, there's a slight chip on the screen, you can kind of see right there, a slight little hairline crack, but thankfully it's on the bezel, so you can't even see it, so who cares? That is pretty much that. For some reason, this one is turned off. So, as I mentioned, I've been able to base this review off of both the Exynos and the Snapdragon units. These are both 128GB models. The only difference between these two, besides obviously the color, is that this one is the Exynos chipset and has dual SIM support. This one is neither of those. Both of these have 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigs of gigabytes of storage, which is still great. The, the storage and the RAM on both of these leaves a little bit to be desired, but if they do and you otherwise like the package, there is a 512 gig option out there with 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I've been wanting to grab one of those to review, but realistically, that is definitely a phone where if you have that one, you might want to actually look into rooting it because that is definitely one of the phones that will outlast its software where the hardware is still perfectly capable and that tends to be the case with note phones so these phones will continue to run fast all the way through the end of their software life although they are susceptible to the occasional bug software support is gone so if you need a phone with software support and constant security updates which to be honest most people say they do but they really don't but if you truly do then the Note 9 is obviously not going to be for you. In fact, any Note at this point is not going to be for you. You're going to want the S22 Ultra. If, assuming you need the S Pen, which, if you're watching this review, you probably are needing the S Pen, because if you don't care about the S Pen, then just get an S9 Plus instead, obviously. The whole point of the Note is to have the S Pen. Now, this particular white one didn't come with the proper white pen, so I stuck my purple pen in it, not wanting to focus wondering, the white pen, if you've ever seen it, it looks like that. Very pretty. Now, if you're trying to replace your Galaxy Note 9 S Pen, be wary, as not only are all the colors besides black, blue, yellow, and bluish yellow, and purple, those colors you'll be able to find. Trying to find the silver, and especially the white, is a bit difficult these days. Um, same with the copper S Pens. You can still find them, but they're a bit harder to find. And when you're buying a Note 9 S Pen, you got to be very careful, as many of the S Pens that these come with can often be aftermarket ones that don't actually have the Bluetooth functionality. So if you have that happen to you, then you might be having a bad time because those S Pens are not going to work with Bluetooth. And I have one somewhere around here, but I don't know what I did with it, which I need to figure out where it is because I need whenever I send this white one back, Part of the reason why I'm sending it back is because it had the wrong S Pen in it. So in the meantime, I have one of my purple S Pens in it. Which doesn't match the white great, but you know, it's it's at least a light color, so it kind of matches, sort of. And I went ahead and stuck the SIM card tray in there just to kind of bring that point home. Anyways, you probably don't care about that, but it is worth noting, because if you're wanting the Bluetooth S Pen, which is a great feature on the Note 9, then... You gotta be careful because a lot of sellers will bundle knockoff pens with their phones and not advertise that they have knockoff pens with their phones. And whenever you try to ask them for a replacement pen, like I did with this seller, I don't want to send this phone back. But the seller's like, well, tough shit, you're not gonna get a replacement pen, we can't send you a pen. Which is kind of ridiculous because it's like, you guys obviously have more of these phones. I understand it's not gonna color match, but why don't you give me a genuine pen because that's kind of what I expected I was gonna be getting with a $200 phone. But anyways, and that also brings up price. You can find open box, brand new condition Note 9s for about 200 bucks, and you can still find them in really good shape anywhere from 175 to 195. And if you're willing to take one that's a little bit more beat up, you can get these as cheap as 120, 150, if you absolutely don't care about condition and just want the dang thing to work. 
Screen burn is also not nearly as big of a problem as it was on the previous Note 8, which is definitely nice because if you're trying to buy a Note 8 nowadays, even if you're okay with the price discrepancy and you don't mind the downgrade and the smaller battery on the Note 8, the Note 8 is really susceptible to screen burn. So even if you don't care about the battery, which in of itself is a good reason to get the Note 9 instead, trying to deal with finding one that doesn't have screen burn is really a pain in the rear. And the Note 8 definitely makes it a bit of a struggle to find one in good shape. Note 9 does not have that problem. With, through every Note 9 that I've got, none of them have had screen burn. And this was pretty much the point when screen burn, at least on this variation of the Infinity Display, was pretty much eradicated, and I rarely see it on the Note 9. I see it on the Note 8 all the time, but not on the Note 9. So if you're worried about screen burn and buying a secondhand phone, I've bought like five or six Note 9s over the years, and never once did I get one with burn-in. Now granted, that I also specifically made sure to get ones that weren't advertised as having burn-in. If you don't care about burn-in, for some reason, then you can buy ones with burn-in that are much cheaper, but it definitely does degrade the experience a little bit. Now, I touched a little bit on the battery, so how's the battery in the Note 9? Well, this is going to be the hardest part of reviewing any phone, because there is no answer as far as how good battery life is, because every single phone is different. If you're buying a secondhand phone, or even if you're buying a brand new phone, and there's some variations from batch to batch, you can have wildly different metrics when it comes to battery life. For all of my Note 9s that I've bought recently, so all three of these Note 9s I bought in the last six months, no, this one I bought a year ago, these two I bought in the last six months, and despite this one being my daily driver for over a year, the battery life has not gone down in any noticeable way. I'm sure it has gone down, it definitely has after consistent usage, but it's not enough to hamper me just yet. I can still get through a day with this no problem, and I find the battery life to be within spitting distance of my Galaxy Note 20 that I currently replaced, which also in of itself has some battery degradation, as it's perfectly normal with age. Now this has a 4000 milliamp hour battery, which has aged pretty well. I believe the battery capacity on this is estimated to be about 3500 milliamps, which is about the same as its one of its immediate predecessors. Although, obviously, this has the advantage of not exploding, so there is an advantage there. The Note 7 is also one of my favorite Galaxy phones, but the Note 9, to me, gives the edge on my favorite Galaxy because it also has much better battery life without needing to explode. Even though the Note 7 size and design is a lot more comfortable in my hand than the Note 9, the Note 9 is a little big, especially with a case. Without a case, it's a great size, but with a case, especially a thick case, it can feel a bit like a brick. But if you're worried about that, the smaller Note 10 can be had for about the same price, only a couple dollars more, and it'll give you a much smaller Note in the form factor of the much older Note 7, while having the screen size of the previous Note 9 and Note 8. So if the size is a problem for you, the Note 10 is your only option, as the Galaxy Note series only gets bigger from the Note 9 from there on out. So if you like the size of the Note 9, the Note 20 Ultra and the S22 and S23 Ultra might seem the slightest bit too big. So for many people, the Note 9's size is a good sweet spot. And I mentioned the fingerprint sensor, that's in the perfect spot, don't have to worry about it going through a screen, which on the Note 20 series and newer, the fingerprint sensor is a lot better. On the Note 10 series, while I like the Note 10s, the speaker and the fingerprint sensor on the Note 10 series is hot garbage. And this Note 9 definitely seems like an upgrade compared to its most immediate successors in that specific regard, even though it has less storage. It has the same amount of storage as the Note 20 series, though, which is a bit odd, and that made the Note 9 feel a bit more future-proof because Samsung in the States downgraded the storage on these phones because they hate us for some reason. So that's actually a selling point for the Note 10 series and now the S23 Ultra, but everything other than that, it's a knock against it. But with the Note 9, it's at least a draw compared to the phone that you may have been upgrading to two years afterwards. So... Yeah, there's no 256 gig version of the Note 9, at least not in the States, but the 512 gig version will give you plenty of space if you need it, and more specifically, if you can find one of those versions. Because nowadays you can find them, but as time goes on, it's going to be a lot harder. Just like how there is a 64 gigabyte version of the Galaxy Note 5, but good luck finding one of those nowadays. All the ones you find are going to be 32. And it's the same story with the Note 9. 
The vast majority of them are going to be 128, and for most people, that will be sufficient since there is an SD card slot that ex that officially accepts a micro SD card up to 512 gigs. So there is definitely that. So is there anything else that I missed about the Note 9? I mean, you've got the iris scanner on the front, which combines with the facial unlock to do intelligent scan, which I don't even have set up on this phone, but it works incredibly well. And I tend to gravitate towards the face unlock between those two, but having the iris scanner is great. Especially back in the days of COVID, when masks were covering the majority of your face, having a way to scan into your phone with your eyeballs instead of needing to see your entire face, that was a godsend. Thankfully, that's not a problem anymore, and I would hope that by the next time we have a pandemic that the Note 9 is long obsolete for the sake of the world, but if that did happen again, which there might be some possibility, then the Note 9 would definitely have you covered because you can sign in with your eyes and with your fingerprint and it works much better than any of the biometrics, even on the newest S23 Ultra. So that right there from a security standpoint and from a usability standpoint gives a win to the 9. And you still have all the same features that you have software-wise from your newest Note 20, which... I didn't even realize this until literally two or three days ago that some of the features I use all the time on my Note 20, and part of the reason why I upgraded, were for things like the bedtime mode and the ability to, to write notes on your always on dis or write notes on your screen off memo, save them and search for them manually later based on the contents of your note. That's a great feature, and I didn't even realize until looking that it was added to the Note 9. So that right there is another reason to hold on to your Note 9 because you've got the software features from the Note 10 and Note 20 on your Note 9 with Android 10. Now, of course, it would have been nice if there was some further software updates, but we know that the homebrew community will definitely take care of the Note 9 as it's pretty much the most popular and most recent majorly successful flagship that still has a lot of the power user features that people value like headphone jacks, physical fingerprint sensors, heart rate monitors, expandable storage, etc, etc. Also no notch, no hole punch, which the hole punch on the Note 20 doesn't really bother me too much anymore, but not having it is equally as nice, even if you sacrifice a little bit of screen real estate. It definitely makes watching videos and other things like that much more palatable. So that in of itself is a great feature. And this screen, 6.4 inches, Quad HD, still absolutely gorgeous. And again, no high refresh rate, but in my case, I literally like that. I've used high refresh rate displays and they make me motion sick. And I've never seen any other tech reviewer mention that. I don't know if there's just something wrong with me. I don't know, but I can't use high refresh rate displays. They make me motion sick. So this not having it, if anything, is a benefit to the Note 9 and to the standard Note 20 and basically everything except the Note 20 Ultra and newer anyways. But if you must have the high refresh rate display, then yeah, you'll be a little bit disappointed in that regard. But I don't think you can be realistically disappointed about anything else about this screen or about this device. Again, there's no wide-angle lens, but the wide-angle lens honestly sucks at focusing anyways. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Note 20. I bought this specifically for the wide-angle lens, and this wide-angle lens can't focus worth a damn. Even when I have something very clearly intended to be focused on, it just doesn't focus. I thought my phone was defective, but everyone's telling me that that's how it's supposed to be that the wide-angle lenses just don't focus. Which, why would you want a lens on your phone that doesn't focus? What the hell is the point of even having it at that point if you can't get a good shot out of it? So, I don't get that, but for whatever reason, that's part of the industry now. And maybe the S23 Ultra is better, but I don't know. I haven't used one. Actually, no, that's a lie. My roommate just got an S23 Ultra, and I played with the camera for a little bit, and I couldn't get the, uh, granted I didn't mess with it for very long, but I couldn't get the ultra-wide lens to focus either. Even on the newest phone. That costs, two, you know, a thousand dollars and change. You know, twelve hundred bucks. So, yeah. Is this camera a few generations old? Yeah. But are we at the point where we're, pretty much every camera is really good and we're splitting hairs at this point? Yeah. The Note 9 is definitely one of those phones where I can go back and confidently use the camera and still get great shots out of it. Even other phones that I like, like the Note 7, 
if you take the Note 7 and you take it out and take pictures with it, it looks good, but it doesn't look great. It definitely looks its age. The Note 9 still holds up. So, again, that's another reason just to not upgrade. So, right off the bat, you've got a lot of reasons to stick with the Note 9 or even pick one up for dirt cheap nowadays. So, why are people not doing that? Well, there's just this hype around people constantly needing to upgrade and just kind of being pressured into it. People are basically taught that you need to upgrade your phone every two, three years minimum, and if you don't, then you're falling behind. But here's what I recommend. Still upgrade your phone every two, three years, but stay a generation behind. Which means that if you have the Note 9, Right now might be the time that you would be consider upgrading now that there's an S23 Ultra. But don't upgrade to the S23 Ultra because they're going to give you like 30 bucks for your Note 9. Like not even getting. Even if it's in beautiful condition, they're going to give you nothing for it. There's no point in trading it in. Just keep it as a backup. But what you can do, go on eBay right now. Pick up a Galaxy Note 20 or Note 20 Ultra. Especially the Note 20 if you're okay with those limitations. But even the Note 20 Ultra... Pick one up for 300 bucks, 300 to 400 bucks depending on condition. Maybe like 450 for a brand new one sealed in the box. And yeah, at that point, you've got a phone that's pretty close to what they currently offer. Not that much different, and you've saved a lot of money. Now, the colors unfortunately suck on the Note 20 Ultra. So if you're going to get the Note 20 Ultra, I'd say get the white, but that's what I'm going to do. But. None of the colors are really good on that phone. I miss the days of a blue note. I know I don't have the blue note 9 in front of me, but it is one of my favorite colors. Although it's still not as good as the blue coral on the note 7. This color needs to come back. This is beautiful. There is a blue note 10 plus that looks really nice, but I don't haven't been able to find one that is in decent shape. So there's that. This was the best color on any note in my opinion with the rose gold. But nobody seems to care anymore. Probably because this is prone to rapid, unplanned disassembly. But anyways, enough about the bomb. Note 9. Also, nobody who ever shows off the Note 9 colors ever focus on the frame. So this is what the frame of the Alpine White looks like. Ignoring the wrongly colored SIM card tray. It's just a very light silver. Very reminiscent of the White Note 5, which would have been the last time we got a glass back White Note. And the Note 10 looks pretty similar. Oh, that also reminds me. Another thing that we have on the Note 9 that we don't have on any other Note since then is matte colored sides. These sides are not the really glossy metal that are prone to getting scuffed really easily and getting dented really easy. So we actually have a matte finish on the sides, which makes it a little bit more resilient to micro scratches. Now, if you drop the damn thing, it's still going to dent pretty badly. That was there when I bought it, unfortunately. See that little dent right there? Someone dropped it on concrete. And most of the time when these have dents, it's on this corner because some cases don't cover this corner properly. But we can see the cloud silver frame, which has like a very like metallic brushed baby blue accent that's very hard to pick up on camera and often shows up as just silver but that's very pretty I am trying to collect the Galaxy Note 9 in every single color since it is my favorite my favorite note ever and there is a very close second for the Note 7 but obviously most people are not going to want to go back to this because, number one, you can't find them anywhere. Even the fan edition you can't find anywhere. And also, why would you? It's obsolete. It only runs Marshmallow. Assuming the thing isn't bricked by software. Note 8 is still a good phone, and there will be a review on this at some point. But there's not really any practical reason to get one over a Note 9. Unless you just get such a good deal on it that it's worth the hit in battery life and lack of a Bluetooth S Pen. And of course, it being one version behind in software support. The Note 8 is a beautiful phone, and I do love my Note 8. It's very nostalgic because this is one of the first Notes that I ever got and ever was really excited to upgrade for. But, yeah. 
Note 9 definitely takes the cake and still is a king. I don't really think I missed anything, but if I did, feel free to ask questions in the comments below, and I'll happily answer those. I know I didn't show off the Note 9 a lot in terms of software, but most of you guys have seen it already. There isn't much to, to really say about it. This is just me gushing about my still favorite phone and how it still is a good phone. There's so many other tech YouTubers who will say that this is long in the tooth and you shouldn't buy it anymore, even conceding that they love the Note 9, but they'll still say for some reason that you can't have one. Just because something drops software support doesn't mean it's useless the day afterwards. It does mean that you're not going to be confident that this thing will keep being supported by your apps for however many years. But if you got it for 200 bucks and you get to use it for the next two years before your apps start to stop supporting it, why not do that? I think the logic is, well, just get something newer so that way you avoid that in the first place. But it's going to happen with those phones too. So enjoy what you like while you still can, because there will be a day at some point where you won't be able to anymore. Anyways, on that note, this was Intellitech Mobile with my full, mostly in-depth review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, simply going over every feature that is missing on newer notes, and busting the myth that the Note 9 is somehow unusable in 2023, because it still is. Hell, the Note 8 and the Note FE are still usable in 2023 but they also are starting to lose support and they are one software update behind the note 9 so that is where that comes in that's why i said that i'm confident that even if these drop support this year which who knows they will maybe they will maybe they won't and when i say drop support i mean for banking apps because that's my threshold for when most people are going to want to upgrade is when their banking app stops working and they have to use a web browser Obviously, many other apps will support all of these phones for many, many years to come, but for, for some people, that's the threshold when they finally decide it's not worth it and decide to upgrade, and that's the minimum, and that's, you know, the soonest that anybody realistically would when it's at least related to software and not just wanting a newer phone. Because obviously, obviously, if you drop the thing and shatter the screen, and you don't feel like putting money into buying a new screen and getting it fixed, then obviously, yeah, that'd be the time to upgrade. But assuming your phone's fully working and you don't have any problems with it, then go ahead and keep using it. And if, if the issue you're having is just the battery, get the battery replaced. It's not a lot of money, and at that point you have basically a brand new phone. Because that's the number one thing that degrades on these phones. And if you're capable of doing DIY, replacing the battery on the Note 9 is not that difficult. Although you will lose water resistance in the process. So, that's that. This is Intellitech Mobile signing out. Note 9, still a beast in 2023 and beyond. This is Intellitech Mobile signing out with my in-depth fawning review of the Galaxy Note 9, the best phone to ever exist. And I don't say that lightly. Let me know your thoughts and experiences with the Note 9 in the comments below. Let me know how you like the Note 9. Are you still using a Note 9? And if you are, tell me what version, what color, what storage version, what carrier. I'm very curious. I'd love to do a poll, a sort of unofficial poll in the comments seeing what exact version of the Note 9 everyone is running. Do you got a blue, a purple, a black? Do you got one of these white ones, a copper? Do you have 512? Do you have 128? Is yours carrier? Is yours unlocked? Let me know. I'm very, very curious. Um, all these ones are unlocked. This one was originally the U firmware, but I installed the U1 firmware, so there's no carrier bloat. And these two are different versions of dual-SIM Alpine White Note 9s. This one is the Chinese version, that's the SMN9D0, or SMN900. This is the SM N9, or SMN9600. This is the SMN960F, but they're both the dual-SIM versions, which doesn't make a difference to me because... I always carry around two phones for both my SIM cards anyways. But hey, it doesn't hurt to have it. Anyways, enough yammering. Let's move on. This is Intel Tech Studio signing out. Subscribe to see my future video on my entire Xbox 360 con con controller collection, as well as my review of Android 4.4 KitKat in 2023 to see how well it stacks up, as well as my in-depth review on the Galaxy Note 3 after a decade, after a decade of my first ever major flagship phone being on the market. Anyways, this is Intellitech Mobile signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace. If you want to see reviews on any of these phones that I'm currently throwing on the table, be sure to reply.
Yes, that is a Note 7. Green battery. This is for sale, by the way. It's an I it's an iPhone 6S Plus on iOS 10. I don't want it. I don't care. There's another Note 4. There's a Galaxy S4. There's a note, another Note 4. Here's that Note 8. Here's the Note FE, which I just did a video on. Here's an S6 Edge Plus. Here's, ooh, here's one. Here's the first ever Galaxy Note. You get the idea. So the Galaxy S6. Oh, the S6. There's the Note 5. I think you get the idea. S5. Mostly Samsung, but a few others. Peace. Gear S2.